back, man. Uh, and immediately we're starting off with bad vibes. I said that Kira Sedgwick was Nurse Jackie. Someone in chat, people, people typing. That's actually Edie Falco. Okay, you're right. I forgot about that. What is Kira Sedgwick in? She's in another one of those shows where she wears a blazer. She might be investigating some kind of crime or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. The Closer, not Nurse Jackie. What was I thinking? That ain't Falco? It, but me watching Nurse Jackie, that is Falco. I still think it's crazy there was a show called The Alienist that was on television. And then if you ever go like, oh, I don't watch sci-fi, people are like, no, it's not sci-fi. It's about a psychic cop. And you're like, that sounds kind of science fiction to me, brother. Anyway. By the way, we're playing Repentance because it's fun. It's Charles Barkley's favorite show. You know, I would have thought that it's like the NBA on TNT. Do you think when Charles Barkley goes to England, he banks at Barkley's? You ever notice how two words sometimes sound the same? The alienist was not psychic. Excuse me? Daniel Bruhl? Hold the Steve? What the heck was he though? Wait, am I thinking of the mentalist? <laughs> what was the alienist? He talks to dead people? As far as I'm concerned, that's a that's a variety of psychicness. Hey, Keenan Hewson. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you. The mentalist was not psychic either. Who was the psychic one, bro? There was a psychic one, okay? Why don't you tell me what the alienist is? Psych? I on it with God as my witness. I've never seen psych. I didn't think it was a show about a psychic detective. I thought it was a show about like a psychiatrist detective. Uh, every single one of these shows is about detectives. Like I knew that for sure, but... Numbers with a three. Yo, Daniel, thank you for the raid. Dude, we're early here. This is an early Daniel raid. You know what it is? Lies of P is over with. Mm, I don't know if we want that. Hang on. How dare you? What is this, man? Point one damage? It's because of a mishap in Spelunky Randomizer. Things you hate to see. We've all been there, and I don't mean on vacation. Bozo like, might let you play the sack room. I'd be a bozo if I had a sack room. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, to be honest with you. Does NL ever play a character other than Isaac? Brother, let me tell you. I have a video series for you that's going to bake your noodle. <laughs> I have played all of the characters, some more than others, but certainly all of the characters, like at least 75 times each. The playlist is 5,150 videos. That's, um, and that's an understatement. That's actually probably exactly correct, but... I did my time in the Isaac Mines. You know, it's like you're asking Wayne Gretzky. Hey, Wayne Gretzky, you want to get out there with the Columbus Blue Jackets and see if you still got it? Nah, bro, I'll stick to the MGM Grand ads. And occasionally being an analyst on TNT. And Keenan Houston, thank you again as well. Thank you. I'm not the Wayne Gretzky. I, I'm not even the Mario Lemieux of Isaac. I, let's just like walk back the narcissist allegations a little bit. I would say I'm more like, there's no doubt I'm in the Isaac Hall of Fame. And as a player, not as a builder, I might add. But I'm probably more along the lines of like a Temu Solani. Or maybe even a, a well, it's, I was going to say Yarmir Yager, but there's kind of like a, a reworking of Yager's legacy. Now he's renowned mostly for his longevity, but for like 17 years, he was one of the most offensively potent forces that the NHL has ever seen. So I don't want to say that, you know, Yarmir Yager basically was just like a guy who put in his time. Like he put in his time and he was, he was winning Ted Lindsay trophies. 
I can't believe I'm getting bozo, bro. Can you put this in NFL terms? Probably, um, probably not. Um, I don't know. <laughs> probably not. Three coins! Teleport me to the angel room? You piece of junk. Don't you know who I am? Ladanian Tomlinson? No, kind of like the opposite. I, if anything, I'd say I'm more like a Frank Gore. It's like he didn't necessarily put up the most amazing uh, stats throughout his career, but he worked at a position that is renowned for being, uh, like having a short lifespan as a career, and he put in like basically two decades of it, while also performing like well above average. Uriel's next? I shouldn't have done this then. What are we doing here? Frank Gore is the Yarmir Yager of the NFL? I don't think so, because I don't think Frank Gore ever won uh, MVP. I don't know how many MVP awards that uh, Yarmir Yager won. I'm pretty... Wait, did he win the... He won something. Maybe he won the Rocket Richard the year the lockout came out. I can't remember. Or the lockout ended, I should say. Hmm, hmm, down, oh, what did your zaddy do? Gotta figure out where we're going with this one. 25 cents. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Judgment, what do you do? Spawns a restock machine. Interesting. Worth worth holding for sure. Okay, well, I'll be leaving then. And honestly, you can suck me. We'll be using a restock machine later. <laughs> That's what I get for interfacing with the mechanics of the game. See you never. <clears throat> He won the heart trophy five times. See, that's sort of the thing, you know, new heads. And I can't blame you for being born in like, you know, the year 2001 or something like that, right? That's not your fault. I'm sure if you could, you'd probably choose to be born in like, you know, 1973, the same as everybody else. Hang on, let me close this for a second. Let me, let me move my camera down to cover my trinket. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, but here's the thing, okay? Yarmir Yager, a lot of people are like, he's most notable for playing into his like 50s or late 40s. There's some truth to that, but I mean, as someone who was like, I don't know, three when he entered the NHL, the bro was a freaking stud from day one. Also, he had like the, the sickest hair of all time plus the Jofa bucket, plus he was playing with Mario Lemieux. They had like a, it was like a buddy cop thing. That was not smart. That was not smart. He has one of the funniest hockey cards of all time as well. He also shamed that girl who tried to blackmail him. That is true. That story did happen. Um, he slept with a younger woman and she took a photo and said uh if you don't give me some money i'm going to release this uh and embarrass you and he said why would i care <laughs> like i'm i think he was single and he clearly was not embarrassed about the the exploit to begin with so he basically said like skill difference i'm not trying to play into the, the like any kind of Gender-based narratives here. I'm just saying that is how that went down, okay? You can look it up for yourself. It was a teammate's girlfriend. That's why it's blackmail. Yeah, but then, like, he should have threatened to release the video then. She should have been like, don't tell, you know, Jonas or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. He, he plays in the Czech Extra Liga. I don't know what kind of HP I got, so I'm leaving here. She did the blackmail like in reverse. Maybe it was like a reverse psychology thing. She was like, I don't want him to tell anybody about it. So I'm going to say that I'm blackmailing him.
Shop reroll? No, no, no. We save for uh, an angel deal. A penny saved is a penny earned. In my opinion. Don't tell Harry. No thanks. Forgot we were angel pilled? Me when I, um, Meg Ryan when she meets Nicolas Cage in that movie where Nicolas Cage is an angel. I'll straight up take chemical peel. I'm not even. Oh, come on, bro. Come on. What's the most used emote on your channel? I don't know about like uh, better Twitch TV, but like, I don't want to tell you what the most used channel emote was. It was, uh, no, it was not Lion Fries, it's Lion Late, which is fair. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have paid someone to make an emote to cyberbully me when I'm, like, changing my daughter's diaper in the morning, but what the, the ink is dried. This was made way before that was a thing. Yeah, but like, I mean, people used to use Lion late when I was late by like 45 seconds. Now I'm late by like 15, 20 minutes. So they got a, they got much more do cause, do cause, meeked. What is the lyrics anyway? Something like that. I was going to say I don't listen to German music, but that's not true. Um, every once in a while, I'll do a Benny Adami Schlager ride. You guys familiar with Schlager? It's uh, German party music. Kim Petrus? I didn't know Kim Petrus was German. That makes sense. We hate Schlager? Benny Adami doesn't hate Schlager. I mean, it seems... <laughs> When I did the Schlager ride, I was like, I would never listen to this in my downtime or in my uptime. But I was like, you know, I'd support it, I guess. Why would you willingly listen to Schlager? It kind of goes crazy uh, out of the saddle if you don't know what they're saying. Hey, NL, why do you look like the average bald guy? You biting into... Uh, Three slices of turkey lunch meat and a slice of cheddar cheese in between two slices of bread. Hey, why does this thing taste like a turkey sandwich? Because it is, brother. Sometimes you got to trust your, your senses. It's a nonsense comment. Hang on. Chaos? I'm, I'm anti-chaos. I'm pro-order. New order, at least. And also Joy Division. More so Joy Division. But you still, like, you gotta... They did a good job, given the circumstances. He brought it back. Everybody loves Blue Monday. How does it feel? I think, dude, I can fucking do that. To treat me like you do. Kermit singing? Don't make me cry. Rainbow Connection, kind of a beautiful song, to be honest with you. Well, we're definitely going a listy blood. Um, which means we should probably take more of Babylon first. No, I forgot. They made it so you can't have fun anymore. <laughs> no, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Hey, chat, has NL seen Poor Things yet? Oh, you mean the movie that's been on the festival circuit in uh, northern Italy and uh, has only come out in Toronto, Los Angeles, and New York City in North America and is opening wider this Friday? Yeah, 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 no, I've seen it twice, actually. 
I've actually, I've seen it so many times, I'm kind of like sick of it at this point. I haven't seen it, but I will, I will go, well, I won't go see it, but I will see it when it comes out streaming digitally. Or when I uh, take a flight and it's on the airplane, because I love uh, Yorgos Lanthimos movies. I love movies that are uh, darkly humorous and everybody talks like a robot. I don't know what it is about it, but it works for me. My, my toxic trait is that I, the favorite is not my favorite, ironically, I suppose, Yorgos Lanthimos film. My favorite Yorgos Lanthimos film at the moment is still The Lobster. I like the favorite, but I love the lobster. I'm a killing of a sacred deer man myself. Surgery so bad he blanked someone else. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Cause it's the same guy, right? It's the same guy. The dude who plays the freak in all the movies. Tiny boop squig shorterly. Yes, sir. Bright burn. What's that movie? Salt burn. He drinks the bath water. God, I wish that were me, etc., etc. Slugs be like salt burn. That's damn true. I can imagine. Uh, I don't want to do this. I just want to bang on my drum all day. Yep. <laughs> Could have told you that was going to happen. Would have been nice to have a key there. Hang on, I just got to focus. We're getting downright surgical. Ironic. No rerolls coming. Stolen joke? It's not stolen. Anything you write in chat, this is like the stuff posted on Facebook. As soon as it's posted here, it belongs to me. The same way it belongs to Mark Zuckerberg. No bone heart yet, please. What the frick happens in the movie Sunshine? Why are there sun zombies? You don't get it, okay? You just don't get it. I, and I'm not getting that. I'm not getting mega. I don't have any familiars to sacrifice. What are we doing here? Get out of my face. Um, they went crazy because they, they started worshiping. Listen, I saw this movie once in 2007 and I, uh, loved it. I have not seen it since. If I remember correctly, there's a spaceship that comes before the first spaceship and, uh, that spaceship, everybody started to lose their mind because of the long, uh, solemn journey. Uh, and the, uh, of course, the import of the mission at hand, which was the survival of the human race. And uh, the, only the captain lived, but he had become so burned by uh, ex like direct exposure to superheated ultraviolet radiation that he resembled a zombie and he had lost his humanity because he'd been isolated and, and gone crazy. That's my CEO of yapping. Well, they asked. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it. And I, you know, this is before smartphones existed, so it wasn't like my attention was too divided. Back then, when you watched a movie, you actually like watched a movie. You didn't decide that you were gonna give it like a four star on Letterbox before you even sat down in your seat and then just scroll through TikTok during the the runtime. It was a different era, okay? Yeah, we want it. Plus one, kinda true. I'll take that. Things were simpler back then. Once but never again. So that friend I sent to my little brother. Choo choo trains after on time. Something like that. 
The driver said, hey man, we go all the way. Of course we are willing to pay. That one's for you, Dan. I don't know what I'm doing in here. It's kind of crazy that um, on Amazon Music, Weezer had the number one song for me this year. Now it's because my daughter likes to listen to Holiday, which is a great song in and of itself. But for a guy who mostly talks negatively about Weezer, sure listened to a lot of Weezer this year. I'm not lost. Look, item room. Eyeball tears. Would you go with Dan to see Weezer? Um, yeah, probably. I don't know why I wouldn't. I mean, it, it, especially if the tickets were free. NL loves hating popular bands. We found the one Imagine Dragons fan in the world who's like, yeah, yeah, now, now that you're Weezer-pilled, why don't you do Imagine Dragons next? You don't understand. I hear Imagine Dragons, I would say, six times a week on the Peloton. That's why I hate them, is because I listen to them. I don't really hate Weezer. I mean, the, the Blue Album is a classic. Pinkerton, I go back and forth. I think I've, I've settled on being a Blue Album Andy, but there have been certainly years of my life where I've been like, Pinkerton's a better album. And then, you know, some of the stuff like pre-make-believes, which I guess is like just Maladroit and the Green Album. Like there's a couple of tracks I like and everything else can basically suck me, but... Health up, okay. And we would, don't take any other ones. Why do you hate the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Um... That's a complicated question, okay? I hate them. Um, I, hate is a strong word, for one. I don't want sulfur. Just let me think about this. This is a tricky situation here. I can't afford to risk it, in my opinion. I don't hate them. Um, I don't willfully listen to them because almost all of their songs seem to sound exactly the same. Now, what's crazy is that the one song that they keep remaking, I actually, I'm not turning that off if that comes on the radio, you know? And th there's an exception. I do think Under the Bridge might be a top 100 song of the 1990s. You know, even some bands that I don't uh, necessarily love, I think you, you got to acknowledge when they have a popcorn classic, and Under the Bridge is kind of a popcorn classic. But I would like, I, I almost never mind, that's Nirvana of course, but I almost never mind uh, hearing one Red Hot Chili Peppers song. The problem is when there's two on in a row and you go, no, 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 you're trying to punk me, Ashton, this is the same song. At which point that's where I kind of, I fall out a little bit. Actually, they're goaded. Okay, I mean, listen, you should enjoy that I don't enjoy them because it means that their concert tickets are going to be cheaper due to less demand. Back me up, Dio Guiga. If you want to be out there, like, waving your lighter for California, rest in peace, simultaneous release. I mean, that's that's you. It's not me, and that's fine. It, it The world don't move to the beat of just one drum. I like Can't Stop. I mean, you're talking to somebody who was, I was a huge Red Hot Chili Peppers fan from 6th grade to 8th grade. <laughs> what happened after that? I discovered um, other music. You know, you, you asked me the question, so don't be mad when I tell you my answer, okay?
<laughs> Something about the lyrics to Lenny Kravitz, Fly Away, written in all caps. Yeah, 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 yeah! They do play that song. Well, I shouldn't say they. I would say on, on the average Peloton rock ride, there's like a 40% uh, chance that they play Lenny Kravitz Fly Away, which is not like an insanely high chance, but it is pretty amazing when you consider that there's like a thousand other songs that they could choose and it just keeps showing up. It is basically a coin flip. I mean, there's some, do they play TNT a lot? Well, they do play TNT a lot, but they didn't play TNT on my rides today, but they did play Back in Black. <laughs> they always preface it with something like, you know I couldn't do a rock ride without adding an ACDC song. I'm like, really? There's only eight tracks. Like there's like a thousand rock bands you could choose that people have heard of. They just keep going back to dunk, dunk a dunk, dunk a dunk. Squiddle deedle deedle. It's all right, every once in a while. There, I don't know if, if many of the other Peloton crew are here. The PZ today might have might have knocked some people out. People might be a little EP. They might be taking naps. I'm not even like pretending that I'm uh, going gangster mode. I was pretty like drained after the, the PZ today. But um, I completely forgot what I was gonna say. I'm going through a, um, a, a, there's a Peloton dichotomy with a couple of exceptions. My instructors who, the instructors who have the best music taste, in my opinion, are also like my least favorite instructors, which creates a, a problem. Every once in a while, I'm like, I'll take speed. Speed is kind of range, as long as you're not a coward. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, that Christine Dare Cole uh, New Wave Ride playlist looks freaking sick. There's some deep cuts on that. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I, <laughs> maybe I won't speak so strongly, but I'm like, I don't vibe with this lady at all. Give, give me the instructor who plays uh, the Pointer Sisters and, you know, has us get out of the saddle a little bit more often. Oh yeah, why don't you design your own ride? Okay, easy. 30 minute uh, Brian Eno music for airports ride. Plus two, plus two, plus two. Babies on fire, excuse me, Babies on fire is from Here Come the Warm Jets. And if I was putting anything from Here Come the Warm Jets on, it would definitely be like a cadence push to needle in the camel's eye. We're talking music for airports, buddy. We're talking... Dun, dun. Bring. Dun, dun, dun. Bring. You know what I'm talking about? No? 1-2 is a banger? I'm, I'm a 1-1 one, one guy, personally. That's, it's one of my all-time uh, homework albums. Music for Airports, Volume 1. Selected Ambient Works, Volume 2. And Boards of Canada, Music Has the Right to Children. That's all you need. Cicero said all a man needs is a library and a garden. In 2023, all a man needs is a, a little bit of so-called intelligent dance music. How about a two hour, 57 minute selected ambient works volume two ride? Me having uh, pedaled somewhere between 50 and 400 cadence for 90 minutes when the song comes on where Aphex Twin just goes, Squack, <laughs> 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 
That's a new PB guaranteed. Then we'll follow that up with... Um, this is my kingdom come. Da, 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 da. You get the idea. This is a tune. If I were you, I'd be turning that speaker up. Don't forget, you can always hit that more music button on the side. It's an absolute belter. You know I couldn't do... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Dude, 30-minute Tenacious D ride would go crazy, though. You know, I forgot about this, this tech right here. Don't, please don't type the lyrics from that dude on Twitter, the, the, the Jamaican rapper who kind of looks like Mathis. Please, it's, it's, it'll make me laugh every time I see it. I'm not repeating any of it. Oh, man. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not repeating it. You can keep typing them. I'm not repeating them, okay? How about a 30-minute Island Boys ride? I'm up for it as long as they include their number one track. The one that they did on Cameo for the dude who got fired from the military for getting a DUI. Please don't court Marshal Sergeant Baker because he's an island boy. Just trying to make it. Just trying to make it. <laughs> oh, man. The world is still crazy for sure. Like in a mental illness way. I do want to say, I think we all have a bias probably from just reading the internet a lot to think that it's getting worse every year. It's a little better now than it was in 2020. 2020 was a fucking... You know when people say, like, my life is a movie for real? Well, that was a movie for real, but it was directed by, like, Ari Aster. Like, that, it was... Sometimes you'll get, like, a... Hey, remember this three years ago? And you're like, what the hell were we doing, man? Tiger King, sure. <laughs> Here, slash marker me on this one. Slash marker. Repentance. Repentance. Repent. Repentance. There we go. 